we'll basically give you a whole history and physical. You know, we'll, we'll ask you a bunch of questions about your weight, about your weight loss journey, you know, about your other medical problems, prior surgeries, what medications you're on. We'll see, you know, do a physical exam, etc. All right, then I'll, we'll both, all three of us, we'll, all, we'll give you a good talk about both procedures. Again, why do it, how we do it, potential complications, etc. And then we'll kind of see what procedure you're, you're leaning towards and we'll give our, our input, okay? And ultimately you'll make a decision which one you want. You don't have to decide then and there, but most people do. And then we'll give you basically a, a checklist of all the things you have to do to get approval from us and get approval for, from the insurances. The first thing you need to do is if you decide you want to go ahead with surgery, you need to uh, find out from your insurance company if they will cover the insurance. Now most insurance companies do cover these procedures uh, these days. When you speak to someone on the phone, you may get someone who doesn't really know all the ins and outs of your particular policy. So you need to see the uh, weight loss surgery policy in writing. So you need to see the, the policy for your insurance um, uh, uh, policy in writing and what their policy on weight loss surgery is. You can oftentimes find this on their website um, as well. So make sure you get the proper information. And then we'll discuss with you the ins and outs for your particular insurance uh, policy. Um, our nurses in the office know this in and out with the different, uh, different insurance agencies. And you'll have appointments and you'll have uh, tests. And we'll, in the meantime, be trying to get authorization from your insurance company for the procedure you might have decided on, uh, whether that's the sleeve or the bypass or the band. Um, if you haven't decided at the first visit, that's OK. Um, you do need to decide by the next time we see you after all that testing is done though because we do have to plan with the hospital in the operating room. So some of you might be considering paying out of pocket and, and so that will be a discussion with the billing office and so forth. Uh, we can talk about that separately if that comes up. Um, think of this uh, information packet um, as uh, your, your best buddy. As uh, Dr. Paul said, you know, sleep with it, bring it on the bus with you, bring it to work, read it many times because there'll always be something new for you to find in there. Um, and the more you know, the more you'll be prepared for surgery and the better you'll do after surgery. So we'll schedule those tests. You'll start exercising. If you can improve your uh, cardiopulmonary fitness, even a small amount, that will it really improve your risk for surgery. So. The, the likelihood that you're going to have a, a, a post-operative pneumonia or something might go down if you can kind of expand your lungs even before surgery. Um, and likewise for smoking. So smoking decreases your, um, your lung performance. It causes you to develop blood clots. It prevents your wounds from healing. It prevents where we sew the stomach to the intestine. It prevents that from healing. So smoking is a triple or quadruple whammy. Um, if you're serious about getting healthy, you can't smoke and you have to stop smoking and stop all nicotine products uh, two months before surgery and hopefully you'll stay off the rest, rest of your lives. Uh, and then birth control for the reasons we talked about in terms of, and, and other forms of hormone replacement um, for the uh, risks that they can cause with blood clots um, also before surgery. So after all that's done, and you're in the meantime, you're getting ready for surgery, then once all those, those check boxes have been checked off, you'll come to the office again. We'll review all the tests with you. Um, some of you may have gallstones, and so we'll talk about the risks and benefits of gallbladder surgery. Some of you may have a little hernia between your chest and your belly that's called a hiatal hernia, and we'll maybe discuss fixing that at the time of surgery. So, and we'll discuss your particular surgery that you will have decided on at this point the bypass, the sleeve, the band, okay? And uh, we'll answer any questions you have. We'll book a date for surgery. And then between that office visit and the surgery, um, if you haven't already signed up for a gym or some sort of exercise plan, might as well go and do it. So you're ready to go and you know, you'll have motivation to go afterwards if you already spent money on it. Um, don't smoke. If you already quit, please don't start now. It's not a good time. Um, stop the birth control. You'll have to get pre-admission testing. That's for anesthesia. And then for most people, but not all, we'll have you go on a liquid diet for two weeks. That's to help you have a little extra weight loss beforehand, okay? 
Um, probably lose about 10 pounds or so, but it also helps shrink your liver. We operate underneath your liver, so we want it as nice and mobile as possible. All right, so day of surgery. We do all of our operations at Roger Williams, okay? You're coming through that really awesome new ER, okay? That entrance, that nice, beautiful entrance. You'll walk in there and you'll take a left where it says ambulatory surgery. You'll check in. They'll book you in. One of the three of us will come and say hello, okay? And then we'll talk about the surgery again. You'll be an expert by now. We'll make sure all your paperwork's done. We'll make sure all your questions are, um, are answered. We'll talk to the family that's going to be taking care of you afterwards. Um, once that's done, we take you to the operating room. Again, the sleeve takes about 45 minutes to an hour. The bypass probably takes about an hour and a half to sometimes three hours. It just depends. Not everyone's built the same way. Um, that doesn't matter to you because you're asleep. What it matters to you is family. Okay? I always add a couple hour, excuse me, an extra hour or two for putting you to sleep, recovery, etc. So if your surgery is at seven, you know, your family can go away for a while, have lunch, and come back, okay? So that, this is more for family, so it's probably about four to six hours between going back to the operating room, coming back and waking up, and being ready for you to go see them.